Hey, what's up guys? Cotton here. And now it's time to talk about some Soviet weapon modding. Now before we get into this, please keep in mind, these are my opinions really on how I prefer to build the guns or how I feel they best react to mods. I mean, if you disagree, feel free to drop me a comment below, we can talk about it, no problem. But I tended my builds to not build around badge reliance. I like a more of a control kind of feeling rather than raw power in the weapon. But with that, let's get started. So I guess we'll start up with pistols first, and the Tula Taka, yeah, whatever, however you pronounce that, is your first line of pistol in the Soviets here. Now this thing, it's actually really slow at its factory standard, and that's the one thing that bothers me about it. And that's how I tell everybody to mod your weapons. Play with them at factory, see how they feel, and see how you what you feel it needs. Does it need more speed, more oomph? In my case, the Tula, I like a lot of speed on it. Now the stock ammunition is going to run you the most control, but considering you don't really lose that much, I like using the Misha ammo. It's right in the middle, it's not the max damage ammo, but it just gives a little extra something to it. Really not required, I just like it. The sighting isn't really required, but I do use the match sight just to tighten it up a bit more. Makes me feel comfortable. Now for your trigger, you have three options here. Each one just adds a bit more RPM for a bit less stability loss. I like the match trigger. It is gonna give you the most stability loss, but again, it's gonna give you the most RPM. And since this pistol is actually very tight, it doesn't really matter so much. So I like to go with the match trigger. For our internal, I like the lightened pistol spring here because it's gonna add even more RPM to this, which is really nice to be able to just snap off real fast zippy shots. If you want, you can mix in the heavy bolt here for more damage, maybe with the higher damage ammo, bring it up to a three hit kill. But I prefer to just spray it down a little fast because when you mod for damage, the gun's actually very slow and I find myself getting killed with it that way. Under barrels, they both essentially add just a smidge of range. I honestly don't bother considering how minute the differences are. And you're mainly using the gun in a close quarter scenario anyway, so the range, eh, I save the money on it. And if you like, there's a carbon black skin, which I actually need to get, it looks pretty cool. Okay, and now for the Nagant 1895 revolver. Now this thing... I kind of mod it similar to the Tula where I like a lot of RPM on it, but I actually do use the highest damage ammunition because it basically guarantees a 3 hit kill, possibly even a 2 hit kill if they're wounded. But this, the stock ammo is going to give you, you know, the most stable run, but it's not horrible. I like it. I kind of use the match sights here to counteract some of that accuracy loss from the ammunition. Now under trigger, once again, we're going for our max RPM, which is the match trigger here, and we're going to combine that with the light and pistol spring. Now if for some reason you want to use the heavy spring and slow it down a bit, it does make it a little tighter and more accurate, but again, I don't like how slow it feels. Every time I've needed this gun, it's a very close quarter scenario, and I like to have that speed on it, just to quickly drop down somebody who runs up on me. And again here, barrels, I really just tend to stay off barrels when I'm on pistols because the gains are just so minute, you know, it's, uh, you're really only using this in close quarters. So you can save yourself some money there. But of course, the sight is not required, the ammo is not required, but if I had a recommendation, you're going to want more RPM on the revolver. Alright, so now your first submachine gun here, the PPD. It's actually not as bad as people like to say it is. The trick to this weapon is giving it a lot of rate of fire. That's all it needs, and it's almost like a PPSH. Now, when I use this gun, I generally use the stock ammunition. You can throw on Misha or Devil if you want, but the damage gain is so small, I'd rather rely on just 71 rounds coming out of it faster than, you know, having extra cost in ammo, so I usually stick with the stock ammunition here. I don't even bother with the field adjusted sight here, I don't even actually have it unlocked right now on this character, but you really don't need to tighten it up that much, it is what it is, it's kind of a sloppy feeling gun, but when you start actually throwing on some RPM to this thing, you're going to want a field trigger here, I mean preferably I guess you're going to want the marksman trigger, just for the added RPM, but I actually I don't have it yet, I unlocked the PPSH beforehand. 
And for an internal, you're going to want to go for the Lighten Bolt. Even though you're losing a little bit of range here, it has the highest RPM gains, even more so than the Light and Spring. And you'll notice a difference when using the PPD with stock ammunition and just a Light and Bolt and a Field Trigger, it's going to be wild for you. The Marksman Trigger is not really required as it's a higher end item and you're only gaining, you know, 40 more RPM here. It, not the hugest deal breaker, you can get away just fine with Field Trigger. And now the PPSH, which is honestly my favorite close quarter gun in the game, I find it way more lethal than the M2 or anything. Now I run this again, stock ammunition, just like the PPD. I don't really see the need to add this little smidge of damage here. I mean, maybe if you really are worried about heavy set badges, but again, you have 71 rounds that are going to come flying out of this thing at 900 RPMs. I mean, <laughs> believe me, if anybody's in front of you, they're dead. You don't really need a field adjusted sight, I don't even bother, it does tighten it up a little bit, really it's a personal preference, but it's a very minute change. So here's where the magic happens, is when we start putting triggers and internals on it. Now you're going to notice the field trigger and the marksman trigger, they both maintain the same RPM. It's really up to you whether you want to lose more stability or you want to lose a little bit of bullet accuracy. I personally prefer the marksman trigger because it's going to take away a little bit of that cone fire jumpiness. It's actually taking away a little bit of recoil, giving it a, a little bit of a downward pull now. So that's actually a good thing. I like the feel of that. But if you want to save money or you just don't have the marksman trigger yet, field trigger will still get you there just fine. You won't feel any recoil gains with it, and it's still a really good trigger, so can't complain. Now again, when we come over here, I don't even know why this heavy spring is here. That's funny to me. <laughs> I think you're going to want to be right here at the light and bolt. Because again, it gives you the most RPM. And I'm not really concerned with losing a little bit of range here. Because we're going to be close quarter with this gun. This gun is meant for point capture. It is not... It is, don't even attempt mid-range with it. Because it's just not there. The light and spring actually gives the same RPM as well. But it's a higher end item and it's going to cost you a little bit more. So there's nothing wrong with still using a light and bolt. I find it just as effective. Save a little bit of money, you know. The barrel, uh, I just don't use it. The, again, the difference is so minute for a close quarter weapon. I really don't see the point in wasting the money on it. And I couldn't help it. I had to buy that Russian Blackwood skin on there because that just looks good. And I got that rusty Christmas skin. But the black wood, ooh, I like that. So yeah, boys, stock ammo, light and bolt, marksman trigger. I promise you, you'll, you'll love it. Okay, now for the PPS-43. Now this is the tier 3 submachine gun. This is the only tier 3 in the game, and Soviets get it. It essentially feels like an MP40, but it actually has more ammunition, and it packs a little bit more of a punch. So considering how well you can control this weapon, I actually like to use the Misha ammo. It's a decent damage gain and you, you don't, even though you're gaining a bit of recoil here, you don't really feel it so much in the gun. The gun performs very well. But if you're looking for just high, you know, nice, stable as can be build, stock ammunition is where you're going to be at. I mean, you could go for the P41 ammo, I just don't see the point. It tightens it up a bit, but it's really not required. The gun feels good without it. So I'd say you're either at Misha or TT. You can go for the Devil if you want, but I never like the Devil ammo. That It drops off. You're doing virtually no damage at 25 meters. I know I say it's close quarter. Every once in a while it's nice to be able to you know, pick that guy at 30 or 40 meters. And this gun does that a hell of a lot better than the PPSH does. So I'm going to stick with Misha or Stock. I don't bother with a sight on this thing. It's actually tight enough. If you want to tighten it up a bit more, go for it. But it feels good without it, so you can save some money. Now when we get to the triggers, you'll notice that again, the field and the marksman, they do the same RPM. But the marksman has a much expanded cone fire, and you actually feel that when firing it. So I like to stick to the field trigger here, just because it's a bit more controllable. Now when we get to the internals, again, on this weapon, I'm looking for more RPM. It's kind of slow at factory, and it takes to RPM very well. So the light and bolt is a perfect mod for you. 
you lose a smidge of range but it really again this gun is mainly close quarter it can mid range a bit ideally you would want the lightning spring to not lose range but it's really a higher tiered mod i don't even have it unlocked yet i will soon i just don't use my soviets that much again the barrel i don't like it on close quarter guns that it's such a minute difference i would save the money and yeah, I couldn't help it. I had to buy that camouflage A on there. That just looks really good. Alright, so let's talk about our SVT now. I actually got this one in one of those new bundles that they have for sale, which was a good deal. You even get a skin with it, which is nice. So, now with the addition of the scout barrels in the game, I like the ridiculous killing power of the sniper ammo with the scout barrel. Your damage is just through the roof. It ensures a two hit kill regardless of how heavy set their badge is. You know, gold, silver, titanium, whatever. So, you can stick with light ammo if you want. You can still use just the scout barrel. It'll make you a two hit kill. I just like to use the sniper ammo because it also adds a nice chunk of range to this thing. So when you're scoping it, or even not scoping it, you're getting a good bit of range out of it. Now, I suppose if you wanted to, you could run the heavy ball with the scout, and it's going to give you some pretty ridiculous damage, but it's still not a one-hit kill, so really, the damage drop-off isn't worth it for a rifle. I'd say we're at sniper ammo here. Now, this right here is a personal preference for your sight. You can either just tighten it up and use iron sights, or you can throw a scope on there. I like scoping with all of the starter weapons now. They feel amazing at two-hit kill, and that's where I'm at. You'll notice I'm not using a field trigger job. I actually have a heavy bolt on here, and I'm slowing the gun down to make it a bit more accurate. I treat it kind of like I would a sniper rifle, but I find that I still have enough RPM to dance in close quarters. You wouldn't want to put a field trigger on here while you have a heavy spring on, because they kind of just cancel each other out. This one takes away rate of fire and adds stability. This one does the exact opposite. So I would rather leave it a bit tighter and more accurate just for the sake of scoping. Again, personal preference. And if you want, if you actually find yourself in close quarters a lot, go ahead and throw a trigger on there and the light and spring with your scout barrel and you're going to be just spraying people down in close quarters. Just go nuts and hip fire them even. Ah, the barrels, yes. Now you have the option of the stainless steel barrel which just adds a, a little bit of range. And it's a decent item to use until you get your ribbon up to get the Scout 2 barrel. But I highly, highly recommend the Scout 2 barrel here. The damage... <laughs> my cat is just mooing like crazy. Sorry if you guys can hear that. The damage and the range gains are just insane on it. So I really prefer the Scout barrel over anything. And as you can see, I bought this from a bundle. And it comes with a skin called the Black Lotus. Which actually looks pretty cool in-game too. Alright, so now for the Mosin, you're basically looking at the same exact builds as the other bolt actions if you want a one hit build. For infantry, you're going to be at type D heavy ball and you're going to be at the scout barrel. That just gives you enough damage with the heavy bolt internal. Those three pieces together get you above 100 damage, so you're at one hit kill. But keep in mind with this build, uh, heavy set silver and gold will stop this, I believe. Heavy set silver, I'm on the fence about. I'm pretty sure it will. I don't have exact numbers here. I'm just kind of going off the chart. But again, maximum stability is going to be your stock ammunition. You know, it is what it is. I have to really recommend sniper ammo if you're going recon with the Mosin. And I recommend the Type D heavy ball if you're going infantry. If, if you're going for like a speedy kind of two hit kill, you can use the stock ammunition and then just go with the heavy bolt, and the scout barrel. And you'll be at kind of a, a two hit kill without spending as much money on the ammunition. But really up to you, personal preference again. For the sight, again, that's totally on you. I actually have this character on a recon. I have the German little three prong one on here, which is nice, but the T-scope will get you there too. Or maybe you prefer iron sights. Both of these are actually well worth it. They will tighten up your your cone fire a lot. Match sight's giving you the most tightness, of course. And now people always ask me about triggers and why is it that they actually make the gun shoot faster if it's a bolt action? That is a very valid question because it doesn't make sense, right? But I do use a trigger because in the game, 
you have to look at it as a number. Let's just say I don't have this trigger equipped. I can shoot 28 rounds per minute. With the trigger equipped, I can shoot 35. That number increasing like that actually slightly speeds up your soldier's hands. He actually shoots the bullet and then rebolts it a little bit faster and has the next one ready just a little bit faster for you. You'll actually feel it if you run the Mosin with and without a trigger. It really doesn't matter what trigger, I mean if you want you can go all out with the marksman trigger for the most, but the field trigger is going to give you the, the least stability loss. And I mean we're talking fractions of numbers here now, so I just use the field trigger. Again, you don't have to do that. Maybe you like taking your time when you're sniping, that's fine. I'm just saying sometimes I hit somebody and I really wish I could get that second bullet out a little bit faster. That's where your triggers come in. And now again for your internals, you have all the options. You can speed it up, slow it down, do whatever. I like the heavy bolt. It's just the only one that adds damage and it's essential to any one hit kill build. And you really do need one hit kill now considering how many semi-autos are going to two shot you and how many people are, you know, starting to wise up and at least wear heavy set bronze. You're going to want higher damage on a bolt action. The barrels, again, the Scout 2 is where you're at all day long. The stainless steel is okay to use, but you really don't even need to use it while leveling. If for some reason you only want more range, go for it, but the Scout is just where you're going to be at. And I also think it's cool, the Mosin has some of the coolest skins in the game to me. It has all these stenciled field camos and stuff, and they all look pretty cool. I bought stencil here, and I think it'd be cool to see these on more weapons as well. These are pretty cool looking camouflages. Alright, so now the AVS. Now I have to say, this thing actually feels better now that they added that new barrel to it and they tweaked the cone fire a bit. I can comfortably use sniper ammo and control the damage on this thing very well. You can see I actually have mine fully modded, which I actually would not have done maybe a couple builds ago. It was suicide. But now, I, I'm not lying when I say it feels better. So it, again, if you want the maximum control, you know, your stock ammo is where you're at. Type D Heavy Ball, I really don't see the point in it when sniper ammo gives you enough damage to secure a 3 hit kill while giving you much, much more ranging ability which you sometimes really like with the AVS when you toggle semi-auto and you want to try to pick some heads. So I go sniper ammo, but again, really up to you. I don't think there's ever a scenario where I can really recommend the JPH ammo. So just sniper ammo, where we're at. <laughs> now again, this is really a personal preference. I personally do not like the scope on the AVS, but I also do not like it on the STG or the M2. Maybe it's just me, but I prefer the assault rifles with an iron sight. So considering the AVS's reputation for its stock recoil being kind of high, I do use a field adjusted sight to tighten up that cone fire a little bit. You only have one trigger option, but honestly it's a good one. You can never go wrong with a field trigger. You get added RPM, hardly any stability loss, so go for it. I actually am running the Light and Spring as well, because I've been experimenting lately, and this thing is really beastly now in close quarters. 600 RPM with 3 hit kill is nothing to play with. So I actually do recommend the Spring right now. You don't need this if you don't like it as fast. I do that on my STG, I actually use a trigger without a spring, and it just feels better to me, more controllable. Wow, I'm gonna get spammed now with invites, hang on, let me see if he does it again. Nope, okay, I think we're good. Alright, so the barrel here, yeah, okay, what I'm gonna do is accept and then minimize it because people are rude. So, you have stainless steel barrel, and you have the Eura 2 heavy barrel, I don't know how do you pronounce that. Now, I'm not really sure if the stainless actually increases damage. That act, I'm not sure if that is a, is a visual bug or not. You guys might have to let me know in the comments here. That might be a visual bug. But I know that this one actually does add a little bit of damage, and it also tightens it up. It, it makes it even more accurate somehow, and it feels really, really good. And I just can't emphasize that enough. This new mod is really good for the rifle. It really tightens it up. It gets that cone fire under control and you feel effective at close range. So I recommend this new barrel all day long. Stainless steel barrel usually just adds a bit of range. 
if you're scoping and you want it sure but even if you're scoping i'm still gonna recommend this new barrel the euro 2 so yeah that's where you're at and yes this is the russian blackwood skin on this too i don't know i like black on my weapons i have it on a lot of weapons here the camouflage a looks pretty cool too but i don't know i'm a sucker for the black all right and now our dp28 i actually did a video on this gun not too long ago and I was surprised to find that I liked it with just a field trigger equipped. It was insanely stable, good RPM, and just great killing power, great accuracy. But you have a lot of options with this gun, just like other LMGs. For instance, you can run maybe the heavy ball ammo in conjunction with the heavy bolt and the, the chrome line barrel. It'll get you up to a two hit kill weapon. Granted, the enemy isn't wearing heavy set. The damage is right at 50. But that's still really good numbers to be putting out to having 650 RPM. This actually feels very similar to the 1919 in terms of its killing power. The 1919 can go even a hair bit above 50, which is scary. But yeah, you have options here. You can either go high damage or you can just go control with a bit of added RPM. That's what I like to do personally, but really it's on you. The sniper ammo actually adds a lot of uh, cone fire and jumpiness to the guns. I try to tell people to stay away from it. Either use your stock ammo or maybe use heavy ball if you're going for the max damage build. I like the stock ammo. You can tighten it up with sights if you want, but it's really minute. Not necessary. You can save some money here. Field trigger job, again, you just can't go wrong. It does great on the weapon. It only adds a smidge of recoil, but you get about, I think, 70 RPM out of it, so it's not bad. Now, again, you have options here. You can add damage. You can slow it down. You can speed it up even more. I'd say the internal here is more of a personal preference with whatever build you're trying to go for. Maybe you want it faster. Maybe you want it more accurate. Maybe you want more damage. You have your choices. And the barrels, again, both of them are actually interesting. They don't really have any downsides. You either get a little bit of added precision here, which is just a little bit tighter cone fire, or you get the chrome line barrel, which adds a little bit of damage and range to it. Both very interesting because they don't really have a downside, but really it's up to you. I would probably recommend chrome line if you're adding any damage at all. This just complements that very well. And too bad there's no skins because I would probably buy a stencil skin for this thing. Alright boys, last but not least, the big monster that everybody hates, the PTRD, the anti-tank rifle. Now, you only have a couple choices of ammo here. The stock, it is what it is. Not much penetration rate here, as you can see this chart. As this line creeps to the right, you have a higher chance of penetrating within these given ranges. That's why I use the max ammo. I honestly have no idea what this monster ammo is for because it actually does add a little bit of penetration because of the range it gives, but the max seems like it adds more penetration. So unless this is capable of doing something I'm not aware of, I don't know. Let me know in chat guys. Let me know in the comments below. Maybe this has a specialty I'm not aware of, but I've always just used the max ammo here. Now again, sights, you can tighten her up if you want, but honestly, she's pretty accurate. It's a big bolt action rifle. I mean, you can tighten it up, really doesn't need it. You can save money here. I do use a trigger just for the sake of just like the bolt actions. Even though this thing is literally fire once and reload, you just, he gets to that reload a smidge faster. I don't know, this might be in my head. You probably don't need a trigger on this, but hey, I don't know, I'm crazy. The heavy spring, I this is strictly just to take away a little bit of that stability loss, but really not necessary at all. The stainless steel barrel I actually do use because adding more range to this actually increases the effective chance of penetration as well. So adding a smidge of range to this is pretty good. It just helps you maintain that penetrating power just a little bit further. And yeah, that's all I got for now, boys. I hope this was somewhat informative here, or I helped you at least make some mod decisions. Ultimately, I think that weapon modding is really up to the player. And keep in mind that this video was filmed during the Bower update, so things are always subject to change. So just, you know, feel out the weapons for yourself. Equip them stock, shoot them, think to yourself, do I want it faster? Do I want it slower? Is it too inaccurate? Should I tighten it up? You know, just fiddle around with it till you like it. But I hey, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope this helps somebody out there. 
Appreciate you guys watching and take it easy. I'll see you in the next one.